Okay, I want to go through some tips and tricks that will help you in balancing chemical reactions in general and also some of the trickier ones. And basically we're always aiming to get the same number of each kind of atom on the left as in on the right, as in other words, in the reactants as in the products. And I've got four ideas for you that you can use. The first is to leave any diatomic molecules until the end. And by that I mean, by diatomic I mean things with two atoms, uh, things like oxygen O2, hydrogen H2 and so on. And firstly you get the word equation and then you write the the correct formulas uh, equation and presumably you've got that but it's just not balanced. So the first thing to do is set up a uh, inventory of the reactants on the left and the products on the right and the various atoms that are involved that you have and work through them leaving the oxygen in this case till last. So carbons on the left we have one, on the right we have one so that's actually balanced uh, for now. Um, hydrogens we have four on the left and only two on the right so we need to multiply by adding the coefficient of two in front of the water and that will now give us four hydrogens and that leaves us with the oxygens um, on the left we have two on the right now the coefficient um, in front of the water actually gives us two oxygens and in fact that's balanced so this is one of the more straightforward ones but showing the principles um, the second idea is if we've got polyatomic ions we count them as single uh, units and in this case we've got some um, polyatomic mini atom ions in the nitrate and this is, this works if the the ion is present both be in the reactants and also still in the products and so nitrates on both sides of the reaction so we can do this um, approach here. Similarly we have um, hydroxide on the left and also on the right so we can also add that to our inventory as just uh, a single entity. Let's count the coppers. So we've got one copper on the reactant and one on the product. Uh, nitrates we have two and uh, but only one as a product so we stop immediately we find something that doesn't balance we stop and fix it so what are we going to do we're going to put a two in front of the sodium nitrate and now we've got two nitrates now what's that affected let's just always go and update uh, the inventory for anything else that's affected uh, and we haven't got to the sodiums yet so that's we've got two that's part of now our new line and the left we've only got one we need to fix that one so we're going to put a two in front of the sodium hydroxide to give us two sodiums and that's also impacted on the hydroxide ion which we were going to do next anyway so we've got two hydroxides and two hydroxides on the right so that's actually a balanced equation now all right the third tip and this might be um one of our harder one is uh, our hardest one of the th of the four um, if we have to multiply both sides um, to get uh, a balance, we aim for the lowest common multiple, and hopefully that will make sense as we go through this one. So this is an incomplete combustion of oxygen gas um, giving rise to carbon monoxide. And uh, again, we'll count up the atoms. Four carbons uh, before, uh, sorry, one carbon and one carbon after. Uh, uh, four hydrogens is what I meant to say in the reactants, and only two in the product. So we're going to multiply this by two to get four hydrogens and now the oxygens we've got two and we've got one in the carbon monoxide and two now in the water that gives us three now neither of these numbers is a is a factor of the other so we're going to have to multiply both sides and aim to get the lowest common multiple of two and three which is six so that's what we're aiming for and it's easy on the left we can just multiply this by three what about on the right? Well, we've got <coughs> um, an option, a couple of options, but I want to even up the numbers. At the moment, we've got an odd number of oxygens. So let's put a two in front of the carbon uh, monoxide, and now we have two here. We've still only got two here, so we're going to have to change something. I'm going to multiply this by four to give us our desired two plus four, six. Now, hang on, what's what's this affected? It's, we've done it... Um, have to update the carbons because that's changed. We've now got two, two in the um, oops, sorry, clear, cross it out. Two in the products, so we're going to have to change this one. You get two in the reactants. That's affected the hydrogens. So we've now got eight in the products. In the sorry, in the reactants, and happily, um, by increasing this to four, we've also got eight. 
product. So in fact, this is now balanced. And finally, the last example is if <coughs> if you want to, there's actually nothing wrong with using um, fractions, decimals, you know, halves in, in the process of balancing, but you need to finish with whole numbers. So um, balance with halves, then double. And what I mean by that is here's the, here's the complete combustion. And this often happens in combustion reactions of ethane, um, now producing carbon dioxide and water. And again, we've got the same um, atoms involved, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen. And let's count them. So we've got two carbons on the left. We've only got one on the right, so let's fix that. Hydrogens, we've got six on the left. We've only got two on the right, so let's fix that. And we're going to multiply that by three. And now we've got, oh sorry, let's update that. So two there and six there. And lastly, the oxygens, two on the left. And now we've got our coefficients now also have affected oxygen. So we've got four plus three is seven. Yeah. How are we going to get, we'd like to increase two to seven to make it balanced because we've left the oxygen to the end and that's the only thing we need to fiddle with. Uh, we can multiply by three and a half. Three and a half times two is seven. Looks ugly, and it is ugly, but we're going to just double everything and that should give us uh, some nice whole numbers. So what was here was one, we're doubling one to become two. Three and a half doubled becomes seven. Two doubled becomes four. 3 doubled now becomes 6. And we can just check whether we've got everything balanced. We'll go through again and do all our counts. Carbons on the left, 4. Rights, 4. We've now we've got hydrogens on the left. 2 times 6 is 4. On the right, we've got 6 times two, uh, 12, sorry. <laughs> on the right, we've got 6 times 2 is 12. Oxygen, 7 times 2 is 14. And on the right, 4 twos are 6. Oh, R8 plus another 6 is 14, and we're there. Okay, so there are all the tricks. I'll just summarise them um, briefly. Um, if you're balancing chemical equations, you begin with the word equation, reactants left, products on the right. Um, you convert that to a uh, formula equation, which is initially unbalanced until you've checked it through. Correct formula is very important, otherwise nothing will work, so you need to know how to write formulas um, as well. Um, you set up, the first thing is to set up an inventory of atoms with columns for reactants and products and I would advise using a pencil and a razor because uh, you will need to change things about as you go, it's just a to and fro kind of process. Okay, once you've started, um, I was saying leave any single, uh, and I didn't mention it, metal, so metal is an atom all by itself, usually not bonded to anything else, easy to change, or, or any diatomic molecules, so as shown here, leave them till the end because you can fiddle with them to make the numbers work and you won't be affecting anything else. Um, if you've got polyatomic atoms on both sides, you can treat them as single units. That makes the um, calculations uh, counting much easier. Count one type of atom or, or polyatomic ion on each side, and this is just the process that you go through. Um, if it's equal in your inventory, well, that's good. Move on to the next one. If it's unequal, stop and fix it by adding a coefficient, but don't ever touch the subscript numbers. And make sure you go back and update the inventory as you go for anything else that's affected by that change. <coughs> Um, next, if you need to multiply each side by a different number, aim to get the lowest common multiple of atoms on each side. <coughs> okay. Uh, next, um, aim to minimise changes to other atoms as you go. So if, you, if you're picking something to change, um, make sure that it, it has the least impact on other atoms. Um, if you need to add half oxygen atoms, for example, in a combustion reaction to balance, um, you can do that, but you need to end up um, with whole numbers at the end, so you'll have to then double everything. And lastly, at the end, check that you have the lowest whole, whole numbers possible, okay? Otherwise, simplify and basically cancel everything down uh, to get the simplest whole number ratios. All right, that's the end of my um, tips and tricks. Hopefully they're useful, and uh, see if you can apply them. Good luck.